Nudge your head if you, if you showed that. Could you all able to do your distribution? Yes? Left side? Okay. Do you see where it's coming from? Right. Now you got to be careful on what you can multiply, what you can put inside the same root, what you can. If you have the same root, that means you can multiply the radicands. If you don't, well then you can't. So for instance, on this example, when I'm looking at 3 times the square root of x plus 2, I can't distribute that. There's no way, because this has a radical and this one doesn't. This has a radical, this one doesn't. That's a, that's a number. That's correct. That's, that's done. Over here, this has a radical. So does this one. They're the same radical. That means that you can actually multiply them together. If you do, you're going to get the square root of x plus 2 squared. Are you with me on that? This is where we get the square root times itself gives you the radicand. How much is this expression going to give you all together? Are you going to have a root? No. No, because you know that a square root times itself gives you what? Gives you another square root or gives you the radicand? Okay. So when I combine these two things here, I'm just going to get x plus 2. Now I'm going to put that in parentheses to kind of show you that this whole expression gave you whatever's inside of that thing, okay? It's not just giving you x, it's not just giving you plus, it's giving you the whole thing. Plus, now we'll clean this up a little bit. Uh, again, can I make this 3x plus 6? Does that work? No, this is going to be 3 square root of x plus 2. This one's also still going to be 3 square root of x plus 2. And lastly, we'll get a plus 9 at the very end. Is there anything else that you can see that we can do? Okay, like terms. Let's talk about that. I see a couple like terms because I see a 2 and I see a 9. Just because that's in parentheses, it's actually not being multiplied by anything, right? That's a grouping parentheses. It's just saying, this was my polynomial that I got out of this. So really those parentheses are not doing anything for us the only time that they would. It's like in this case, where I had a 25 in front of that. Then it distributed. There, there, was, there was no number in front of it. There was just a 1. So that's not going to change anything about that. So I do have a 2 and a 9 that I, I need you to put together. Okay, that's for sure. Also, is there anything else that I can combine? Yeah. Those are like radicals. Same root, same radicand. So our final answer here, and by the way, it doesn't really matter the order in which you write this. If you want to write the number first, fine. As long as you have all three of these terms I'm about to write. You do need the x. That's from here. I got a 2 and a 9. 2 and a 9 is going to give me plus 11. Got it. Lastly, I've got my like terms in the middle. How much is that going to give you? Six radical x plus two. Good. The radical or root x plus two, that doesn't change. That's as far as you can go. One last question. Some people do this all the time. It kind of drives me nuts. Can you add these two things together? No. Okay. One's got a root, one doesn't. Where did you have to learn with that example? Good deal. Last one you're going to get. Let's make this one solid. Do you guys need more time to do that? Let's take about 30 more seconds to try to wrap that up, okay? Does the order in which you put it matter? No. No, I, that's why I kind of sh showed that on both those. It really doesn't matter which order you do it. Uh, most of the time, I like to write it like that because I like the constant coming last. And I like my x term first. But hey, that's just me. And it really doesn't matter. Okay. On this one? No, on the phone, just there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask it. <laughs> you know where um, we put um, the square root of x plus 2 up, up that one, and then you put times 3? Yes. Why can you, can you put the 3 in first? Sure. Yeah, I was just showing you the order. Here, I, I wanted to make sure you knew where this was coming from, was this one times this one. Okay. But yeah, you can put the 3 first. Multiplication is commutative, right? It means it doesn't really matter which one comes first. So if you're going, oh, you know, I know these things are multiplied. Let's put the 3 first. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, we're about to get going on the next one. Now, there's no square up here, which means we don't have to write anything twice. It's kind of nice. But what it does mean is that we have to distribute just like we would here. It's going to be our FOIL method again. When you do this, go nice and slow and make sure you have everything. Make sure you have everything appropriate. So in our case up here, by the way, do you have any questions on this one? Because I'm going to erase this. I need the room. If we're going to distribute, the first thing we distribute here is our 3 root x 
And our two, oops, sorry, that's a Z. I learned my alphabet real good. Uh, three root Z times two root Z. We're going to write that out. So far so good? You just do a distribution like you've been taught a long time ago. Next up, you're going to multiply a three root Z times a three. Are you going to get a plus or a minus out of that? Plus. Good, so positive times a positive. You're going to write out exactly what we just said. Three root Z times three. Still okay? Yep. Okay. Next up, what are we going to have next? Minus four. Minus four. Okay, so we're doing this times this. That's where we're getting the minus from. Four times two root Z. Four times two root Z. Writing everything out. We're still not doing it in our head. And lastly, everybody, we're going to get how much? Minus 12. Minus 12. Very good. Minus 12. Okay, honest show of hands, how many people feel okay dis distributing like that? Yes, okay, good. You guys are here? It's all right. So, boom, 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 boom. We got everything. We're going to double check, make sure we haven't missed anything. Should have each of these parts listed twice. So we should have two, three root Z's. Yeah, we got it. We should have two minus four somewhere. Well, yeah, there's one here and there's one there. We should have two of these. Yeah, that's, that's right. And then we should have two threes. We have one there. We've got one there. It's within the 12. So we have everything listed twice. We should have four expressions. Next up, we're going to multiply term by term. There's one, two, three, four terms. Multiply term by term to see what we can do according to our, our radical rules, our root rules. First is this one up here. We're going to have 3 root z times 2 root z. Tell me the number I'm going to get out of that thing. What am I going to get? Six. I'm going to get 6. Just like I got 25 over here, I'm going to get 6. Sure. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let's go slowly. 6, I got you. Where are you getting just the z? Shouldn't I have like a root z? It's two square root root z times each other. So they think it's a lot z squared. Okay. So square root of z squared, you with it? Square root of z squared, because you know that's a root times a root, right? You're not adding right here, you're multiplying. So if you're, having, if you're struggling to see where in the world is this coming from, remember that this is multiplication, this is commutative, this is three and, and associative. So three times two and root z times root z. You with me on that? You can do that. This gives you six, this gives you square root of z times itself. Square root of times itself is the square root of z squared. That's just z. That's where we're getting the z from. After that, well, it's kind of nice. We just have 3 root z times 3. How much is that going to give you? Then I know that's going to be minus 8 root z. And lastly, that minus 12. Well, that's not going to change. We've already done that now. We're going to clean up whatever we can. In our case here, we have a 6 z. How much is this going to be when I combine my like radicals? Plus root z. Good, because we, we know a root z and a root z, those are like radicals, same root, same radicand. 9 minus 8 is 1. You're not going to put the 1 though. It's like writing x. You don't write 1x, you just write x. Here you just write square root of z. Minus 12, that's as far as you can go. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this multiplication? These two examples, this one, and this one, if you can do those two examples, you should be feeling pretty good about that. Do you feel pretty good about this? Okay, those two examples will be on your test. Well, maybe not exactly those, but this is going to be like a 4, and maybe like a minus 1, and then like a 5 or something, okay? But it'd be pretty close. Yeah, when, I, when I say the same exact problem, I mean it's really similar. This is. All of them, I wonder about this. So we have x plus one in parentheses. We have in parentheses because it was x plus one and not just like the letter by itself, like the z was. Exactly. So right here, you could really do that, right? However, in this case, it would make a difference because there's only one expression in that. Here, there was an x plus one in the parentheses. Uh, you'll notice that I had the parentheses around this one as well, right? Yeah. Saying that that x plus 2, that came out of my square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2. That's the same thing we did over there. Okay, good question. Any other questions before we move on? Yes. 